I'm totally obsessed with Dylan. You know, there's no doubt about it. And I've been this way for years and years. You know, I get our understanding of what's going on in Dylan's mind because I get right down to the nitty gritty of things. I get into Dylan's thoughts, what he's thinking. But he did know somewhere along the line, intuitively or prophetically, that ultimately I would be the one that would define his poetry. And he knew that all along. I find that kind of spooky, but, you know, we have to realize that particular prophecy. This is where I set up my office after, uh, you know, my wife got an order of protection against me after I had a fight with her so I can't, you know, go around her or my daughter. So these people here were kind enough to uh, allow me to use the apartment to do my uh, Dylanology. Hi. That's Jaybird. Hi, I'm Ollie. Hi, Ollie. How are you? And this is Jim. Hi, Jim. Hi. This was my, this is the book I had in prison there. Oh, what is this book? This is uh, Bob Dylan lyrics. Here's where Dylan did a picture of me. A dog is a despicable person in Dylan's uh, symbolism. How do you know it's you? I can tell, I, it's, you know, that's what I used to look like when I had hair. The round face, the eyes. Here's another one. He puts me in with uh, a bunch of other people. Adolf Hitler, uh, H. Rap Brown, Sherman Mao, Mussolini. And he has, <laughs> Dylan, he put himself in there too. He's, that's how he characterizes himself. Henry Kissinger. And who does he have with the Masters of War? He has a picture of me there. <laughs> so, you know. Is there a defining feature he's captured of you? Know, the round face, the hair, the big ears, you know, the, the nose, the, the nose, the plastic, the nose the result of plastic surgery. Plastic surgery? Yeah, I had a nose job. The, the second to the last time I saw Dylan, it was in front of his house in McDougal Street. He was uh, with his son and they were cleaning the car. And he pointed to his son and said, look at Webman. He had a nose job. He's ashamed he's Jewish. 
I never want you to be ashamed you're Jewish like him. So, you know, Dylan knew how to, you know, demoralize me and, you know, disrespect me at the same time. But at least he didn't attack me that time because the kid was with him. So I was, I was happy about that, you know. That's fine because you can't really. No, 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 Very that big, light. it ain't washed out. That, 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 that okay, I got it, I got it. You like the, the, the photo's okay, the photo's okay? Yeah, you're fine. You can okay. always go into Adobe Photoshop. And... Oh, I know, I, I take right. care of that. that. This is digital, this is not uh, film. So here I am at Dylan's Garbage. Let's see, oh, the Daily News. The Daily News. That makes a lot of sense, judging from uh, Dylan's politics lately. He's been reading the Daily News. It would be pretty barren as far as the garbage goes. Dylan's been hoarding it lately. Con Ed bill. Didn't pay my Con Ed bill. My radio didn't work so well. Telephone bill. Telephone bill. I don't know what is it with Dylan lately. His garbage has deteriorated 100%. This is where garbology started, the humble, humble area. Okay, but explain, explain what you mean now, here. I went through the garbage area. It's real simple. I just reached in there. I said, is this where was Dylan it right here? Yeah, yeah. How long ago was it when the... Uh, it was like 1970, something like that. And what that. did you find? I found a letter to Johnny Cash. I found oh. some of Dylan's poetry. I found recording, you know... Food? Stuff, recording sessions, dirty diapers, stuff about his dog, Sasha. And <laughs> hey, by know, the way, by the way, his dog... name it. I hey, found... You don't know... His dog bit me. What's the name of the dog? Sasha. Sasha. I came in here when I was with you. Yeah. Now I want to see his side of the story. Yeah, yeah, he so has gonna, no side. So I wanted to pet the, I wanted to pet, uh, 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 I wanted to pet the dog and it gave me a nip. Gave me a I nip. I knew Dylan was a devil from that point on when he did that to me. The dog bites me for no reason or to say hello and you give me a goodbye. Another way for me to live, not a way to die. AJ, 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 AJ Weberman. AJ, 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 AJ Weberman. Bob Dylan's not your enemy, he's just your friend. You are just a Dylanologist. One day AJ went to Lincoln and McDougal Street, looking through Bob Dylan's garbage can. He found a letter Dylan wrote to Johnny Cash and other things for rock interpretation. Dylan said to Weberman, Who the hell are you? Why do you always bother me? Don't you know that I am famous and I'm very rich? I want to live in music privacy. AJ, 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 AJ Weberman. AJ, 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 AJ Weberman. Bob Dylan's not your enemy, he's just your friend. You are just a Dylanologist. You are just a Dylanologist. You are just a Dylanologist. Free Bob Dylan. Yeah. Here's a picture of the uh, Sheep's Head Bay houses. There were four murders here this year. Yeah. This, you know, this is number I four. I came once to stay this over is... here with my girlfriend, and they were shooting morning, noon, and night. Yeah, I got you up stay... at 9 o'clock in the morning. I said, uh, it's safe. I'm going to go, and I still heard shots.
So, you know, you'll see the other place where my wife is living is much better, you know. Has so, she been over here? No, I'm not allowed to see my wife. There's an order of protection where she's not allowed to see me and I'm not allowed to see her. How does she feel about that? Uh, she wants it lifted at this point, you know, and she wants the one lifted with my daughter so I can attend my daughter's graduation and this and that. You know, I did wrong by attacking my wife and, uh, you know, I'm sorry for it. I heard what happened with AJ. I realized he needed a place to stay, and I said, wait, I have an extra key. So <clears throat> that's how we ended up in my house. <laughs> Paul H. Room. And like my button says, why be normal? <laughs> And I guess that's part of the problem A.J. had with his family. His wife is a whole lot more conservative than him. And that's a big problem. Because she expected him to be normal. And that doesn't fit A.J.'s... <laughs> that doesn't fit A.J.'s life at all. I actually think it had a lot to do with the fact that you, you weren't smoking and, and it was kind of like, you know... No, she was just, she was bugging me. Well, that too. You know, it was just a bad, a bad scene. But I shouldn't, you know, there's no excuse for my violence. And, you know. As I remember it, she's, she like freaked out. She says, I'm going to put an end to this once and for all. right in the kitchen to get a fucking knife. But, you know, I, I don't know if I imagined that or not, but I generally don't imagine that. I said, don't expose me in New Morning. What's that? Backwards, backwards. You know, you play a part of it backwards. And it says, don't expose me? Yeah. Oh, fuck, man. Jesus. It's the same part that, uh, it's the same part that, uh, you know, yeah, why don't you play Andy Williams' record backwards, man? Yeah, you play the record backwards, man. It only makes sense in, uh, two places. When, in, with Mars and Vegas, and, uh, ain't no reason to go into town. And that says, don't expose me backwards. <sighs> okay, go ahead, man. A.J. Uh -huh. Weberman decides to have a field trip to Bob <laughs> Dylan's house one evening. The classes were held in the evening. And sure enough, about 30 people who were in this Dylanology <laughs> class ended up walking down 6th Avenue <laughs> through the village up to Bob Dylan's place, which was known as 94 McDougal Street. We come here, everyone's uh, hanging out here, climbing up the uh, on the windows. I said Jacob to, is there. On the, I said to uh, go Jacob all over Dylan the place, playing, like, like scavenging rats. Lock. Well, AJ is rummage through the garbage in front of Bob Dylan's house, <laughs> sure enough, the man himself ends up on the west side of McDougal Street, standing there with his arms, you know, <laughs> folded. Dylan's like this now, like this, like with, his, with his jeans on, looking like this right now. Like, right. what the fuck is going on now? Right, right. Now here he is, AJ with his class here. His kids, are, Bob Dylan's kids are up here. Dylan's over here. What the hell's going on? You see, there's a complete state of siege on his right. apartment. So I said, holy shit, man, the cat has caught me red-handed in the act of going through his garbage. He was so mad, it looked like smoke was coming out of his head. So I, I, I said, AJ, talk to him right now. Talk to him right now, forever hold your peace. So AJ, of course, put down the bags of trash. <laughs> and then AJ went and finally met Bob Dylan across the street on McDougal. And what did you do? I says, you know, I says, uh, he says, Al, what'd you bring all these people around my house for? I says, oh, it's a field trip for my Dylan class. You know, he says, come on, man, you know, this is, this is wrong. The next thing I know, they were just walking south on McDougal Street, towards Houston Street, into the night. And the class just, that was the end of the class that night. I didn't <laughs> carry the bags of garbage. I certainly wasn't <laughs> going to carry the bags of garbage. <laughs> So he took me down the block, and uh, we stood in front of the studio on uh, Houston Street. 
And he says, well, what is this about? I says, well, man, you know, it's about you and how you dropped out of the movement and how you're using heroin. He says, I'm not using heroin. I says, you know, I says, the songs sure seem like you're singing the praises of heroin. And so Dylan rolled up his sleeve and he said, look, but when, when, did no he, when did he do that? When did he do that? He did that on House Same Street. night? Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, so I says, all right, man, you know, I got I to gotta look and do this further. So then I went home and the phone rang and it was Dylan. He said, I says, what's doing, man, you know? He says, how would you like a job as my chauffeur? Well, I would like that, but, you know, I, I think you're trying to buy me out. He's trying, you know? like trying to bribe him to keep, keep, right. keep, keep shutting shut his mouth. Stop it right there, because he sees this thing is really getting out of hand. I like, 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 Little pig never stowed. Uh, this little pig went out to eat his meat. This little pig never It's just some schmuck looking to make a big name for himself, which he has, apparently has done. With it, with, with dumb with assholes like you who fall for his shit. That's all Dylan never felt was by government who was violated. And Weberman did, in fact, violate him and continues to do so every chance he gets with all his shitty rights and publishes. And now that he got, you know, now he got out of jail and he got, his, and he's back on the internet. I mean, I get tons of spam from him every day. I have a friend who lives in a city, and and he looks down on me because I hang out with AJ. He says, "Why do you hang out with a guy? He's a garbage picker, you know." And yet we know a lot about Dylan through AJ. Stuff that even Dylan is, is not aware of. I know that Bob really objected. I was adamant about him. Because it, it's, he, not only did he go to the garbage, but he stalked him. And Bob was enraged about Webber. I'm sure he's pissed off, of course. It was, it was uh, almost like a scandal. He wants to rob Dylan of some of his immortality and apply it to himself, which is what that shit had with the Chapman. He wanted to rob some of John's immortality so he can apply it to himself. Now he's the only man in the world who ever shot John Lennon. You understand? Is that not a little unfair? No, because he's doing the same thing. He's violating Dylan and he's robbing you. Know, I, I have no grief for Dylan. I think Dylan's an asshole. I think Dylan's a prick. On the one hand, he could be the most charming man in the world. I think he's one of the greatest artists ever born, but that don't make him one of the nicest guys who ever lived. I mean, I've already had it with Dylan, you know what I'm saying? I loved him, I followed him, and I got shit on by him.
You gotta understand. You, know, you gotta understand something. AJ and Bob were pretty close for a while, and not really. Well, not close. No, close, but enough. You, you I tamed the lion in his cage. Yeah. You know, but it. You know, he decided. You know, he didn't really want to have me shot or anything. He was thinking about. <laughs> he was thinking about getting the mafia to do drive it. him down the river and drop him in. You know. <laughs> Why did it get to? I mean, that's extreme. Well, let me let me tell you why. This is why I, I started why. to tell you, is that AJ was so fascinated with Bob's material that he asked him to explain some of it, and Dylan refused. And yeah. he asked him, and he asked him, and he refused. So finally, he says, "Hey, maybe if I go through the guy's garbage, I can learn something." Right. And that's where where all that started. I have respect for garbage. Garbage is powerful. We'll leave it around for a week or so, and you'll see how powerful it is, believe me. Come on, Buggles. All right, good morning. <laughs> Yappers. Yeah, after I went through Dylan's garbage, I found I got more publicity for going through garbage than I did for uh, interpreting Dylan's poetry. So Esquire magazine hired me to go through famous people's garbage and get a cover story, you are what you throw away. And after that, there was like garbanoia spread throughout the Upper East Side of Manhattan and the wealthier neighborhoods. And they do acknowledge that I was the founder of garbology and invented the word, basically. We're talking about the garbage of celebrities and what it tells you about them with the man who collects it and studies it, A.J. Weberman. The phones are ringing off the hook. Here's the, the raw beer. garbage, as they say. The raw garbage, right? Jeez. Okay. What a mess. Who, who eats Quaker Oats? Who's this? That's that that is Quaker Jackie Oats. Onassis Jackie? Bouvier ah. Kennedy. That's not all A.J. can do to your garbage. He also turns it into a highly personalized art form called garb art. Well, that's correct. I do garbage sculptures known as garb art. Have you been able to find anything from John Wayne? John Wayne? No, unfortunately not. I pay cash from famous people's trash. <laughs> <laughs> what a slogan. Well, it's cool stuff going after the garbage. I mean, I, I, I did a little bit of garbology too. I stole Nixon's garbage. And uh, you know, I managed to make three pickups in the fourth run. On the fourth run, the Secret Service comes out with their bulletproof vests and their Uzis, telling me to put the garbage back in the can and not come back. Police, drop the garbage. And uh, you know, that was rather interesting. That corner station looks like we got some narcos. We got some real long hair hippie freaks over here. Well, I want to see these kids shot. You look in the garbage bag for an, uh, uh, some kind of junk mail or a package, or a label on a package or something that identifies the garbage. Uh, come on, say, stay puppies. Be cooperative. And uh, then you just take the garbage, just lift the garbage and remove it as quickly as possible. And, you know, take it back for analyzation. <laughs> so garb analysis as we call it, in the nomenclature of garbology. Okay, we're gonna get tangled up here. All right, all right. Okay, bye. Nosy neighbors and sanitation men, they're like a pitfall of garbology. Uh, what are we videotaping? A uh, recycling uh, experiment. Yeah, experiment and recycling. It's called garbology. I'm not making a mess or anything. I know, but people get through the garbage, but you don't get those. Okay, we're gonna split. Where are you going in there? 
I just got some artifacts here. Who's your neighbor? Who's that? Let's go, the bitch is calling the cops. He has a shredder anyway, I can tell. There was no, hardly anything in there of value. But there's nothing illegal about garbology. But my situation is tenuous. So I don't want, uh, you know, I would I want to confront the police at this point. I know Dylan supposedly helped AJ out when AJ was busted in 19, 2000. Why, why was uh, Dylan sympathetic? What? Nobody likes to see somebody you know go down for something like this. Especially, you know, especially marijuana. How would Dylan have even known of it? Word travels, it was in the daily news, you know, word travels around. I ran a marijuana delivery service. Uh, a connection of mine was locked up, and he knew where certain fugitives were. And, uh, you know, he turned me in, and so, the, you know, the feds, they put my office under surveillance because he knew where it was, and they saw me throwing away these wrappers from bales of marijuana in the garbage can in the, in the uh, uh, corner of, you know, where I was living. Somebody went through your garbage. Yeah, somebody, they got, <laughs> right. They got me through garbology. Oh, I, I hope he tells you about that because he's the one person who really survived jail. I guess because he was such a character, and like nobody anyone has ever met in jail, he managed to be able to get along with his fellow prisoners. You're not gonna believe this man, but I had a good time. You know, it was okay, you know. I was in with a lot of interesting people. The guy that sold most of the ecstasy at the limelight. I was doing the Grateful Dead head. I got a lot of work done. I, I, that's where I learned that my previous uh, work in Dylanology was, was uh, fallacious. I believe that Dylan assigned his symbols arbitrarily. In other words, the word uh, cell phone could mean guitar as long as words that surrounded it were like were related to guitar, like fret, string, strap, case. But when I was in prison, I, when I did these interpretations, they didn't really work. It didn't make sense logically. It didn't make sense in the terms of the logic of language. It didn't make sense in the terms of Dylan's career. So I borrowed a dictionary from a prisoner, and I found, yes, what Dylan was doing was using lesser used meanings of a word, or words that were used in idiomatic expressions, or words that were used in slang or colloquialisms. And that, that was what he was doing. That was how he was writing his poetry. And it wasn't just assigned arbitrarily. It wasn't like a code. That's what I went through Dylan's garbage for. It was like I was breaking into an embassy looking for a code book. So I'd find something and I'd be able to decode it, a Rosetta Stone, a code book. I was in the realm of cryptography. I wasn't in the realm of literature. So I came to my senses, you know, in prison. Of course, I couldn't smoke pot, I couldn't get drunk, you know, couldn't drop acid. I was straight, straight as an arrow. 
for the first time since I was a teenager. I think you ought to expand your thing, man. Like, uh, if you took some of that energy yeah. and, uh, and spread it out a little bit, you could get, uh, you know, you could get involved in a whole new thing. Don't know, she's working out fine for me. Well, I don't know if there's going to be enough there, man. Sometimes AJ doesn't doesn't uh, get get like the whole picture, so sometimes I might have to make notations and hip him to something he might be uh, glossing over, and uh, he kind of likes that. He tells me he's been using a lot of it. I had a project where I was going to try to take all of the continents on a map, cut them out and kind of piece them together so it would create like a man and a woman. And in the process of doing that, I noticed that Manhattan Island, which is here, kind of looked like a big penis. It's kind of like AJ in a way. If you look at something for long enough, it starts taking on other meanings, other levels of meaning. And so I noticed that Manhattan Island with the nut sack and the penis itself. Kind of strange. And then I notice a couple of lines here, maybe a, 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 a ship route or something, not a bridge, uh, kind of look like semen. And then I notice Staten Island, so it looks like it's coming on Staten Island. <laughs> I just thought it was kind of funny. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you want to stand behind things that you say. I do stand behind most of what I say, man, but you know, I'm, oh, you don't stand behind anything you say, man. Sure I do. Sure I do. You I just don't do it. your old songs, man, that's for sure. Man, I'm going to do an article on you, man. I think I want to write a song about you, too. Well, I could use the publicity. Yeah, well, that's one reason why I wish it, man. <laughs> but uh, I got a good song, man, if I ever want to do one. What's it called? It's called Pig. I'm a pig, eh? Yeah. Oh, bullshit. I'm yeah, a pig, man. man. You're the one who's a pig. Oh, no. Not at all. Oh, yeah. Not at all, man. Not at all. But I got the song, man. I'll sing it for you. Well, I don't have it finished, actually, but, uh... Dylan was afraid he would be persecuted to death. But hey, I've been persecuted to death, and I'm still here. So is he. Yeah, Lenny didn't give a fuck. He could be taking jump like crazy and doing his rock and shit at the same time. Well, you know... You know, look, man. This guy's my friend here. I love this guy. But, yeah. You know, but this white boy is crazy. <laughs> AJ, AJ White, man, I'm Jewish. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> this Jewish boy is crazy. <laughs> I met AJ Weberman in 1970 when he had a class called Dylanology. Hey, man, high five. All right. <laughs> uh, and uh, one night, I said to him, "Look." I'd like to meet Bob Dylan, you know, and like, how do you feel about that? You know, I'm not like your friend to get close to Bob Dylan, but if, you know, but to me, this guy sounds like a really interesting guy. He says, well, AJ Weberman says to me, he says, well, you're a free agent. This is where he hangs out. This is where his studio is. It was a, a storefront on Houston Street, on the north side of Houston Street. I, I, I was looking through the uh, Japanese shades, looked through the door, you know. I couldn't see anything inside of them. And I was about to walk away, and all of a sudden, all of a sudden, the door flings open. And I went, <gasps> like this. And Bob Dylan goes, <gasps> It was, <laughs> it was something that was instantly hysterical. <laughs> you know, it was something really instantly hysterical. And he asked me who I was, and I told him, and doggone it, he invited me inside. What did Dylan say about me? He couldn't have said a good thing. Back then, AJ, this was before. Before the birthday party. Yes, exactly. Yeah. You did the birthday party in front of Dylan's house, and, uh, you know, I didn't, I mean, I was there, I went to the birthday party, I admit it. Yeah. 
but you know, I wasn't. I was not in the planning of that. <laughs> I tell you right now, I was not. No, not me. But once you um, start demonstrating, once you start bringing a thousand people in front of this house, that people tend to get ticked off a little. You know what I mean? Give me this picture. Me over here. With AJ Weber over here at the Bob Dylan uh, birthday party. I think it was May 23rd. When was his birthday? Does anybody know Bob Dylan's birthday? Dylanology was founded by me and Dana over there. You know, when uh, we drop acid and listen to Dylan. You know, so that's basically how Dylanology was born for acid, taking acid trips all no, the time. No, it's also mescaline. Friggin' mescaline. Mescaline. The right. good quality mescaline was right. important. Real mescaline distilled peyote. Right, actual mescaline, not bullshit. I don't think that the relationship between the two men was really adversarial until later when Dylan actually confronted yeah, AJ yeah, because he really pissed him off. No, because he, he said, if you have that birthday party, I'm never going to talk to you again. You but know? after the birthday party, though, is what He I'm never talked to about. me. Yeah, after the birthday party. After the per birthday right. party, didn't yeah, he go came and, like, dig some... There. Yeah, didn't you go and, like, pick up some... I'm, I'm not trying to put you on the hot seat. I'm just simply saying, you know, come on, like, we're yeah, friends, Yeah, we went through man. this today. Yeah, right, right. the whole right. story today. After, after the... Uh... Tell everybody this story. It's an amazing story, you know, that Dylan... That the guy comes and, uh, you know, on a little bicycle driving around and shit. And looking for you. Looking for me, right. I got Woody Allen's garbage the other day. Woody Allen? Yeah. Was well, he see any of the, of, 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 uh, what's the name of his new wife? His, his yeah, daughter? yeah. What's her name? May, no, May Pang? No. No. <laughs> you sick bastard. No, that was, uh, <laughs> that's John Lennon's That mission. was John Lennon's mission. We're going to be going to a place called, uh, uh, Elizabeth Street, where he had the encounter with Bob Dylan from his bicycle. We may have a change of feeling for the person because it was age of time, but far the truth and no regrets for the truth. Just for the sympathy of passion for Bob Dylan. Amen. Another amen. Our uh, woman. Yeah, we'll go with All right, here's right. the scene of the crime. Thank you. Wait, wait, wait. The oh, across the street. So I'm walking down the street like this, you know, when all of a sudden somebody grabs me from behind. I broke loose and turned around. And there it was, it was Dylan, you know? I said, how you doing, man? But he didn't say anything. He just looked at me with these steel blue eyes. Then he knocks me to the ground. And the next thing you know, he's banging my head against the sidewalk, trying to bang some sense into me. He took my free Bob Dylan button and ripped it off my shirt and threw it on the floor and hopped on his bicycle and bicycled down the block. So I got a wine bottle and I ran down to the corner here. So I'm gonna hit him, I'm gonna knock him off the bicycle with the bottle, Brooklyn style, you know? I'll be a dirty fighter, catch him when he's unaware. You know, got ready to throw it and then I says, I can't do this. I'm not gonna do it. Number one, it's <laughs> he'll get off the bicycle and. He'll take the broken wine bottle and stick it in my throat for one thing. <laughs> you know, I gotta mess with this guy. Number two, it's the sneaky way to do things. You know, hiding behind the car and throwing a bottle at him. And number three, I was wrong. I shouldn't have hassled his wife. I shouldn't have gone to the garbage. I deserved what I got. I had it coming. You know, I might as well just take my medicine and, you know, just Get it over with, you know, and don't prolong the agony. There you go. Come Dylan's on. never gonna see me again, you know. But then again, hypothetically. Can, the best I can hope for is, you know, a positive song about 
you know, our current relationship. That's the best I can hope for. Because that's a form of communication. And, you know, you know, even if I don't see the guy in person, what difference does it make? I'm not gonna have sex with him, you know? So, I just as well, you know, communicate through literature. But you can't unring the bell. I'm proud to be a New York City hippie. I'm proud of dirty feet and dirty hair. I'm proud of living in a cockroach. I'm proud of living in a garbage can. Do you know anything about the Rock Liberation Front? No, nothing. Well, we think that Rock has become pretty corrupt and ugly. Do I. What's your name? Sorry. A.J. Webman. I never got funded because I mumble all the time. A.J. and him, you know, right, get, do right. some Dylanology while he's there. Right, right. That's Bye-bye. <laughs> they close right here. This is the home. You've been here for years, AJ. I know. Yeah, my rents are so cheap. You live in town, you lucky guy. I about to live down here, believe me. Well, I, I tell you right now, guess what? We buried many, we buried many persons here. Come on. Go ahead, AJ. Hold the hold up for them, Kevin. Okay. Duck down an alleyway looking for a new friend. Nice and light here. Whoa. Cool. Give me this, I tell you. New Mamelius party's here, man. You have to get a The whole thing is covered with people in the New Year's. Oh, thank God. Cool. Let me get this out of the way so we can sit down. Nice to be I live here right now, waiting to move in a much bigger home where I find it very, very compatible, which I cannot find now with Generation X. I tried upstate New York, Florida, California earthquakes. If I move out of here, there'd be over 1,000 people trying to move in and pay five times more the first. I pay under a thousand dollars a month right now. The landlord says to me, Mr. Peel, we make no money from you here. When will you leave? You may have the tenants are paying for your, your upkeep. When will you leave? I said, I'll leave here when the landlord is dead. When you die, I'll leave. I'm proud to be a New York City hippie. I'm proud of dirty feet and dirty hair. I'm proud of living with the cockroaches. I'm proud of living in a garbage can. I'm proud to be a New York City hippie. I'm proud of dirty feet and dirty hair. I'm proud of living with the cockroaches. I'm proud of living in a garbage can. My wife left the keys from here. We're in my, the apartment that I rent in Manhattan. My wife's daughter is at a chess tournament and, uh, you know, haven't seen these keys for a while. It's cat dog. Look, my daughter wrote in, 
She put a sign up for me. Oh, man. This is the right apartment. I don't know why this isn't open. This is ridiculous. There we go. Come on, Puggles. Hey, you crazy dog, remember me? Hi, Puggly Wuggly. Give me a hug. Come here, you crazy little dog. Come here, you. You haven't seen me for a while. Ah. Oh. Ah. Oh. Let's see what they changed around here. Oh. This is my daughter's room here. Get off the bed. Dog's happy to see me. Here's my mail. Nothing really important. Here's her report card. I don't know what S means. I don't know. I don't know how they, they don't give A's or B's or anything anymore, so. Get off the table. You know, I'm back. You'd be dead, dog. That's right. You better behave. The last time I was here, I was led away in handcuffs. Ah, what a life. More than that, man. man. You're a pig mentality, yeah. Oh, Shit, man, if I was a kid man. growing up, man, I'd, I'd have to look out for you. Like, uh, that's really not true, man. Uh, and I'm not gonna take it seriously coming from you. Well, coming you from somebody who wrote, who writes songs like you write, man. Hey, and man, who writes better songs than I do? Name uh, me somebody. I can name you a hundred songs. Oh, come on. Years. You can't. You know you can't. Uh, let's see. Uh, Creedence Clearwater. Oh, bullshit. Uh... I think Memo to Turner uh, was as good as... Uh, oh, just a bunch of faggot bullshit all wrapped up in about two or three lines and then dumped out with... You're the one he calls a faggot in there, man. What? He says he's a faggy little leather boy with a smaller piece of stick. He's talking about himself, man. <laughs> no, he's not. He's talking about you, man. Oh, get out of here. through an ad in New York Magazine. I told her I was a commodities dealer, but I didn't tell her what commodity I dealt in. So she found out, you know, much, much later on. I just denied it. Never took her to my office or had very much at home, money or pot. <laughs> the dog wins. Dog wins around. Give me my sock back. Give me that sock.
got to go over to Aaron's right now in Brighton Beach. And, uh, you know, he doesn't eat properly. So I'm going to get him some macaroni salad. I'm going to get him some lettuce, some tomatoes, some low-calorie dressing. Also, he tends to eat, like, you know, this all this Jewish food that's not healthy because you're living in this Jewish neighborhood where they have all kinds of prepared Jewish food. He's my buddy, I know. He, you know, he has problems, mental problems, because, you know, when he, he was born right after his mother got out of a concentration camp, and it must have had some kind of effect on his mental development. Everybody knows someone that needs to get a pie. Just think of somebody putting a pie in the Queen of England's face. You know, think about it. I even pied a nun. These Catholic schoolgirls hired me to pie a nun. Let's just say the end result was, you know, besides the money, I ended up getting more than, I ended up getting other fringe benefits. A menage a trois with both the girls. Yeah, Aaron Kay, actually, many years ago, we used to go out. And he was much thinner. He didn't look the way he looks now. I think we had some pretty wild times. As a lover, yeah, well, Aaron's a Scorpio. <laughs> you know what they say about Scorpios. They're pretty hot. I brought, you know, a whole bunch of different kinds of bread. There's also a hamburger for you there. I know, saw it. You know. This macaroni salad, too. Yeah. Aaron only did it. I don't eat macaroni salad. How come you don't eat macaroni salad? I, I never liked it. Very particular. I like potato salad. That really, that's one of my pet peeves in life. It's people that don't like macaroni salad. I'm gonna have to fucking kill you. <laughs> Right now. Doesn't like macaroni salad. Ready for some cockroach action? See the little cockroach in the refrigerator? Cockroaches in the refrigerator, my God. Come on! <laughs> hey, AJ, how about roachified chicken, AJ? I mean, with how I ate the chicken that with the cockroaches crawled over? Yeah, remember? Yeah, yeah. All righty. Here we go. That was Aaron. This is not his car. Don't video tape me eat. Please, don't back. You're, 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 get you're getting carried away now. Are you going to go to the bathroom too? Ah, here we go. Before? Wait, wait, before? Here we go. Before? And there you go. The new David Peel. <laughs> Apple to the core, right into the pitch. There you go. Marijuana, marijuana, hey, 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 good high, yeah. 
Stoned. No, Bob Dylan is a junkie. Let me see. I don't know. AJ Webman says he's a junkie because of reasons uh, in his uh, in his music, his habits, etc. He could have been. He was in the spirit of the junk. But did I ever see Bob Dylan shoot? I cannot lie. I never knew it. He, if I had to bet my life, if he was a junkie, not, I could not take that bet. I really don't know. I mean, I'm not copying out. I'm just letting you know what goes on. But it's Bob Dylan. Some people say Bob Dylan's a junkie. I really don't know. Weberman said he was just a flunky. I picked up on Weberman in the mid-70s. Um, he was very instrumental in um, getting hold of a lot of unusual, rare uh, Dylan audio tapes. And um, he was very generous, I must admit, in spreading those around. And then I think in the late 80s, I interviewed him for my magazine. A very difficult man to talk to, I found. Very difficult indeed. Yeah, it's very much a Dylan community, certainly, yeah, yeah. Um, which Weberman, you know, is, uh, to all intents and purposes, um, outside of. No, I'm hated. I'm the boogeyman. You know, I'm the devil. I'm the unmentionable person, the one that you can't even say bad things about him, because that would just give me some publicity. You just have to say nothing at all. It's just the way things are in the world. If you're going to be an, an innovator, if you're going to start with something new and not go along with the trend, you're going to be uh, the subject of a lot of criticism. Hello? You have to call back. I'm being interviewed. Bye. How did you come to phone Dylan? I was working on an interview with him. You didn't tell me there was any interview. Oh, uh, well, didn't you like, uh, didn't you? Hey, really? man, you want to have an interview with me? Let me know, I'll give you an interview. Don't take, uh... Okay, 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 fine. That would even make it better. Although this isn't bad. Where were you when you made the phone call? I was at Six Bleaker Street, on the third floor. And how did you get his telephone number? He gave it to me. Okay. Were, you, I mean, were you intimidated by Dylan? Uh, not in that context, no, but, you know, at other times he scared the crap out of me, you know, and we'd sit around and we'd be in his studio and he wouldn't, the lights would, uh, you know, it'd become dusk and, uh, you know, he wouldn't turn the lights on and we'd get all gray and spooky and, you know, I was coming down off the caffeine that I was taking so I could express a lot of my thoughts in a short time. And, you know, he'd be sitting around and he'd come up with things like, uh, you know, AJ, if you get into my life, I might gain a soul. I don't think I said that. Yes, you did. That's just what you said, man. Well, what does that mean? I mean, like, I, uh, that, um, uh, it leaves me cold, man. Like, uh, it's, uh, doesn't even sound like me. But you said it. Those were your exact words. What could that mean? So it could mean two things. It could mean that he might, uh, you know, get a sense of humanity back, get that a certain left-wing spirit, or that he might kill me.
Hello. Yeah, we're in Jersey now, man. I don't know what time we're gonna be back. Okay, one second. Take exit 11 toward US 1, Woodbridge, Route 440, the Amboys. Okay, we're looking for NJ18. Toward Asbury Park. It's where Springsteen started out. <laughs> I was a big influence on Springsteen. This is south. We're on the right of the road. Don't film out here. I don't know if it's going to matter, really, because nobody knows where we are. I think they can identify it from that number one. They'd have to find every building with a number one. I just wanted to maintain the security here, basically. You know, I don't want people to know where my archives are stashed. Hi. Hi, Dave. How's it going? Okay. I need to sit down. Hi. Hi. How are you? Just go here. You're going to go. He's back at his wife. Uh, he was staying here for a while, working on his book, because uh, he had uh, been drinking a lot more than usual. And uh, it was showing up in his domestic relationship. Uh, he has since mild, mild it down a little, got a little more milder. Um, uh, he's had a discussion with her when me and Paula were there having dinner with them. And she allows him to drink a little, one, two beers maybe. But that's about it. Uh, left to his own devices, he tends to forget how many he's had. And, um, you know, sleeps a lot and sometimes gets a little unglued and mad about something and blows it up out of proportion. Put it out! Now sit down! Sit down! Behave yourself or die! But other than that, he's a pretty okay guy. Thank you. So I was just going to give you milk so you could have coffee. All right. I'm just going to go through my mail and I'll be right back. How are you guys doing? Is AJ here? Yeah. I don't know if you have a shot of this yet, but that's his book. Oh, yeah. yeah, this is the book. And I showed him the dedication. It says to, uh, thanks for helping me write this book to Jay and Paulette. Eventually in the second edition, this will be in print. Snowy, though. That too. Our soldiers. Uh, there we are. Okay, this is Snowy. Winning now on 1010 wins. All news, all the time. Interest rates are at an all time low. Home. Income is taken. Give me a second, lady.
I know some of the garbage is here. And I hid the Dylanology stuff. But I don't remember where I hid it. I put it in a certain way where it wouldn't be obvious. <laughs> you know, so it's got to be here somewhere. Filed under something else. Because I don't know, I, I had the fantasy maybe Dylan hired somebody to get his garbage back. But how could they do it? How could they go through all these, so many of these boxes, you know, and, and just find that particular thing and leave everything else undisturbed? It doesn't make sense. How long have you known AJ? How many years now, AJ? Since. Years. Yeah. Since, uh, since you've been dating my sister, I think that's been the last time I've seen her. Maybe more than that, right, AJ? Some, yeah. yeah, I think. Sarah's How long have you been married now? 14 years. Oh, yeah, okay, so it's about 14 years. These are the works of garbage art that I did. It's apropos that it's stored in a garbage bag, of course. I haven't seen these in such a long time. This is a, a Garbot portrait of Spiro Agnew, the former vice president of the United States. This is, you can see he lived at 6415 Shadow Road in Chevy Chase, Maryland, after he was impeached. Uh, here's a receipt signed by Mrs. Spiro T. Agnew, his wife. When he was president, all the the people would say to the hippie, Spiro Agnew's gonna get you, Spiro's gonna get you. But he never got us. I got him instead, so, you know. So, so much for Spiro. We'll put him back to rest. <laughs> He's still alive, Spiro? No, nah, he croaked. He's dead. He's deader than disco. Who did this AJ? Who did you? Yeah, I did you this. You put all together yeah, the... Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's, uh, that's cool. Do, do you know, do you, have you seen that before? No, I know. This is my first time I've seen it. I never, I never come here to, you know. Really, this is my first time. AJ is a garbologist, right? AJ? Yeah. He was the. Uh, were you the one who coined the, the word? Yeah, I was the one who invented the word. He was the one who coined the word well, garbologist, actually, huh? Where'd I put my pen is the next question. This is. Well, here's me in Israel. What are you doing then? Hiding out. I was going to be indicted here for. Uh, Jesus, I was fat. I was eating myself to death. Then my brother-in-law gave me a test and said I had a heart attack and I had to stop eating. Whoa, How boy. How come you were eating so much? I, I don't know. I was just into French restaurants and French foods. <laughs> it's bar mitzvah. Ma, this is... Yeah, look at the You are so handsome, Ma. Uh, Anna? Mm, not really. You consider <laughs> ugly handsome, maybe. Wow. <laughs> 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 Original. Here's the garbage. Fuck. Yeah, yeah. I've been looking for this for fucking ages, man. This is the original Dylan garbage. Nice.
Round and round the mountain, round and round we go, picking them up and putting them down and getting some sack time. It's uh, a song that Dylan was writing that he discarded. It's the usual round them around the mountain. The mountain is like a mountainous problem. Get some sack time. The sack is a small packet uh, that drugs come in, like a sack of heroin. Just as, uh, you know, other words like uh, bundle can mean, oh, a bundle. You know, I have a whole bundle of stuff, a lot of stuff, but it can also mean 12 bags of heroin. Down along the cove, I spied my little bundle of joy. She said, Lord, have mercy, Mama. I'm so glad you're my boy. The Dylan Weberman relationship is beyond my comprehension. Or the Zimmerman Weberman relationship more accurate. It's a hard thing to figure out how he knew this stuff so early on that I was the one that was going to uh, be s similar to Verlaine what uh, was to Rambo. It's a weird fucking situation. Like Dylan says, nothing can compare to this affair. It, it'll be good for you, man. It'll be good for you. That will be good for me. They have your picture with pig written on it. You know, you know. I'm not a pig, man. I don't see how you can fucking call me a pig. Hey, you, hey come on. I don't give fight, me that. Man. I fucking fight, man. You fight you know, to go through. Yeah, you fight, fight to go pigs, through my man. garbage, I fight man. Pigs. So, yeah, but like a lot of people believe that you've become a pig, man. So? so and here I am, a Dylanologist. In, a Dylanologist pig, man. In a certain position, man, in a certain position, you know, where I can do a number on a cat, you know, who's become a pig, man, who's become a fucking sellout, you dig? Like, that's the way it goes, man. You write all these songs, some jerk is gonna fucking believe them, man. Okay. You know? And he's gonna get pissed off when he finds out that you didn't believe him or you don't believe him anymore. I believe him. You know? I'm not really, you know. Yeah, I'll see you later, man. Okay, so. On uh, Monday? What? Monday. Yeah, Monday. All right, all right.